Come hey, on. man. We inside, man. We live, man. Inside the world famous uh, Wash Your Back podcast, man. We got a very, very special guest in the building. A lot of special guests in this motherfucker tonight, man. We got Mr. Fab in this motherfucker, man. What up, what up, man? What's up, man? Wash your back, buddy. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. You got to wash that back. So I must ask, man, you know, a lot of people that came to the show, a lot of people, man, very important people, very fixtures from this area and from the West Coast, man. But they all get asked when they first get down, did you wash your back today, my brother? Every day. Tell, do you wash your back, nigga? <laughs> day, day, day. For sure, for sure, for sure. Grab, get, uh, scoot his mic a little bit closer. My brother Telly Mack in yeah, here. Yeah, Telly Mack in the billing. You know, I like, I like, I love Telly, man. Telly, like to me, is a, a unsung hero of this Bay Area music scene, and it's like that middle child that that get overlooked. But when you look at their resume, you see the work that they've done. They've done Definitely. a lot of work, and I feel like brothers like this need the recognition just so they can get a chance for people to tune in and, and look from a different perspective. Because they try to always overlook guys like us, man. But um. Telly represented for the hard workers, guys, that's been doing it for several years. And I remember being young and seeing him drop records. I was like, damn, that's a young dude? Right. It's very inspiring and very motivated. So I just wanted my brother to accompany me tonight, man. And, you know, I love for you, For sure, man. For sure. Telly Mack will tell you, man. I, uh, Telly Mack, to me, is, uh, like you said, an unsung hero. To me, he one of the best lyricists out of film or one of the best rappers. Mm -hmm. Always came with bars. Always laced it. Always had the lyrics. You feel me? So definitely salute to uh, my nigga Telly Mac. Want to give your flowers here uh, while you here. But Fabby, man, what's poppin', man? What's up with you? You got a lot going on, man. I'm working, Mike. You know, continuing to work mm -hmm. and creative. Um, I'm stepping into a higher role of leadership. Okay. And in that, of course, I'll always be creative with the music and do the things of that nature but in my in the evolution of who I am I'm becoming more of I'm stepping into this leadership role and it's very community based mm -hmm. okay so we're doing the thug therapy sessions yeah I've been seeing that thug therapy is a mental health wellness, uh, wellness workshop and we, thug is an acronym correct for teaching healing uniting and guiding um Organizing several individuals, a lot of brothers, about 300, 350 brothers coming out mm -hmm. on any given night, um, sharing resources, revealing to heal what it is that they've been going through mentally, spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a beautiful pulpit for us to get up there and kind of hold class, hold sermon to get a chance to know each other, get a chance to build with each other. Um, and we're also doing one for the women called Fly Therapy as well. And so we run those, um, you know, that's beautiful. The Dope Era Academy, building a school. Wow. You know, building a school where we're we're ensuring entrepreneurialism um, and just creating a curriculum that's just not based off things that these kids won't apply when they get older. Like, right. You know, we learn about history, certain things. Some of those things you'll never use again after you leave that classroom. Facts. So we want to be able to bring back in trade school where we give plumbing and you know, that's going to be sick. electricians and things of that nature where we can give kids a different curriculum. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I mean, I look at it like uh, I was telling you, like uh, I'm producer of Street Soldiers. One of the things they talk about, like the kids need new curriculum. Right. It's kind of dated. Right. You know what I'm saying? They talking about stuff that, you, like you said, we'll never use. I would love to see. I would. I want to know, like, what some of the things in the curriculum, like, it's going to be credit, credit repair, or credit, uh, uh knowledge and management, Most things, of, things like that nature. Oh, definitely okay, financial sure. literacy to the financial the literacy. Line. Thank you. So through the financial literacy, economical empowerment, community development, um, and social skills, understanding the you know the, the dichotomy of where our social atmosphere and social hemisphere has a lot to do with what's going on because. Unfortunately, many of us are products of our environment. So our perspective is only based in our environment. Mm. And if you take a child and you put him outside of his environment, then he'll be at so uh, a culture shock, not realizing that everywhere is just not like his ghetto. Mm -hmm. It's like, damn, this is, oh, y'all not, y'all not selling drugs. Y'all not bipping. Y'all not robbing. And you take that child out of that environment and you put him in a sustainable environment and allow him to just be creative. And you'll be in, you'll get a chance to see how brilliant these children are. 
So that's what we're doing, man. We're doing um, bringing back into the mentorship programs and those mentorship programs where I'm challenging and asking friends, peers, colleagues, influencers to go into their neighborhoods and go start, you know, grab some of these young kids, man. Go sponsor four or five kids, man, and then let's bring them all. Let's have these these men's meetings and these women's week meetings where we're bringing the kids that we're mentoring and showing them a different light. And watch how much change begins to happen. Um, and we become reflective of new environments. So all of that is going on in the, in, the, in the academy, man, as well as allowing the children to be who they are. Uh-huh. You know, um, and if we're if we're not allowing these kids to be who they are, then we'll lose them. All right. We'll lose them. You know, the Minister Farrakhan said it's important that we meet people where they are. And in meeting them there, some of these, some people don't take that extra step and the extra initiative to go meet these kids where they are. And that's why we're losing a lot of our youth. Because there's nobody there to be a, a, a crutch. There's nobody there to be a shoulder. There's nobody there to be an ear. Everybody is pointing fingers and judging. Facts. So, you know, I'm taking it upon, like I say, as I'm stepping into these leadership roles, I'm understanding what I'm up against, but uh, I'm willing to do it because this is what, you know, um, has been bestowed upon my mind and my heart to uh, thoroughly do. What what uh, what prompted that? Where did it come from? Was it a gradual, uh, re- re- like, you know, you realize realization that, okay, I need to do this more. Or was it just you woke up one day and it was just like, you know what, I'm on this now. But because I kind of seen you, you know, I've been knowing you for years, but it's like you go through your little periods and times right now. You seem super focused on, like you said, community work. There's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Straight to fuck up. You know, and yep. unfortunately. People always try to pick and choose when they want to do the right thing. And it's sad because as an influencer, there's only a certain amount of time that you're on stage. Man. And and what I mean by that is when your influence is at a level of um it's like a peak. paramount, it's you're at a peak. You're yeah. you're at a peaking point and you're climaxing. And in that as you ascend, you're climaxing. Whatever it is that you're you're spewing, they're picking up. What's up? Let's talk about in my heyday when we were doing music. I did a song called Shabuba La Boopy, right? Mm-hmm. And it was actually a bet. We was in the studio, and it was me and Keek. And um, I don't think I've ever told this story, but it was me and Keek the Sneak. We was in the studio. We was at the Savage Dragon studio in San Leandro. And um, I said, bro, we popping so hard right now, bro. You could say anything, bro. I said, bro, you could say anything, and they're going to be like, oh, that go crazy. That's yeah, hard. for real. So if I if you listen to the song, I'm kind of like hinting. I'm 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 actually I'm making a mockery of it because I'm like I bet you I could make you say shabula boopy. So I was actually just joking. Like I bet you I could make you say anything, and that just goes to show how high our level of influence was at that time, where a person can make you say anything. Mm-hmm. And so realizing that and reflecting on that as you get older, you say, if I get a chance to regain that level of influence for the same things that I did in that regards, I'm going to go fight 10 times harder to utilize my influence to come back into the community and, 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 and build for something way more important, way bigger. more something that's lasting, something yeah. that, that means something, something right. that the seeds that I plant, I may not reap the benefits of. That's right. the true measure of one's character is if I'll garden for you, and never get a chance to eat from that garden and still find happiness in that. That's my dedication. Right. Some of the seeds that we may plant, be we may not ever get a chance to see what they do in this lifetime. But in lifetimes to come, if change comes, right. may, my, may my soul be held grace. Definitely. I definitely don't want to, you feel me, disregard Shabubula Boopy and Metros and Chirpers and shit. You feel me? Those some classics. Sure, but sure. at the same time, I'm definitely feeling what you said because it all makes sense. Mm. You feel me? Because right now, your influence is it's not as at that peak. Because we're going to talk about all that shit. Because you back at Cameo, mm. you at this motherfucker right now. It's the Watch Your Back podcast. We sit here with Fabi Davis Jr. He's had a long, historic, uh, not a rivalry, but like a... a Situationship with Cameo and the radio. So we're going right. to get all of that. Go, we, we're going to get into all of that shit. Uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, based on what you just told me, basically, was that we come back around, 
to you, um, to you just doing your thing and you not on the same level that you were, but you still popping. You still got hella shit going for yourself. You got the dope era line. Like you said, you're doing your community work. You seem like you, you, you're you prepping yourself for, to run for office or something, man. You trying to be a mayor of the city? Are you trying to be a senator? Impact change? Whatever I do with the influence, I want to be able to utilize it for the greater good of our people. Uh-huh. Um, as you said, I may not be musically at that level, but I'm far greater than I was at that age. I think so. Being 23, 24 and living without a care, uh, there's only so much. And, and if your influence is popularity-based, if you're driving it off that, mm-hmm. you know. But where I'm at mentally and where I'm at spiritually, I'm far greater than what I was at that age. Um, and utilizing how to properly implement my influence, so much greater. So, um, But without that, I wouldn't be who I am now. Right. Um, as we talk about, I'm pretty sure we're going to get into, you know, the, the radio politics and things of, mm-hmm. uh, in my youth. Um, and I shy away from nothing. I shy yeah. away from none of those things, nor neither am I ashamed of any of that right. that I've done in my past from the music, from the content, from the context. Right. Um, and there's no there's no regrets. I feel like in life, um, when we do see the regrets, we, we study them and we learn them. We learn them. Um, and those lessons propel us into being who we are. And right. so um, I do believe that there are regrets in life. You know, maybe there are some things that when you sit back and you say, damn, I wish I could have did this a little bit different. But be glad that you did. And because it took you down a road that made you learn some things. It and made it, you who you are. Yeah, it's been a rigorous road for me. You said on the uh, on, on your on, on your story today, um, you said heavy on the accountability, learning to face what I've defaced. Most definitely. What did you What did you mean by that? Explain that for me. Um, kind of go to back what you just said. We talk about. All right, so when we come up, we are so influenced by the poisons. We look up to the pimps. We yeah. look up to the drug dealers. We look up to the gangsters. We look up to the killers. We look up to, we look up to all of the poisons yeah. that have defaced our communities. Man, you know, um, a small smart story of Son of a Pimp, my album. I have Son of a Pimp 1 and Son of a Pimp 2. And I'm so proud going into making this album. Yo, Son of a Pimp, my daddy was a pimp, my daddy had hoes, blah, blah, blah. and I'm so happy at that. Until you have a six-year-old that says, Daddy, what's a pimp? Mm-hmm. And was Granddaddy a pimp? Hitting and, you with the real shit. And now you have to add, answer this question to a six-year-old defending your father's existence. Man. Defending your braggadocious approach to why you're so happy about being a son of a pimp. Right. And then it begins to make you analyze and interrogate interrogate what it is that you're so proud of. Hit different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, you older, more mature, hit yeah, different. Yeah. So hitting the same. A lot of things that we defaced. There was once a point of time in my life where I was very manipulative. Well, I would utilize somebody else's vulnerabilities and I would use that as access to prey on their insecurities and manipulate them. Very manipulative. Mm-hmm. Looking for an easy way to extract what it is that I wanted for someone for self individual reasons. Mm-hmm. These days now it's more like motivational. Instead of seeing that same girl who I probably would have tried to pimp on to get something from, I want to let her know. Right. Just cover up. Cover up. Straight up. Handle yourself a little bit different. Mm-hmm. That same thing that you're doing for that way, you could use it for this. Right. And that's life. You know, if if you continue to keep doing the same thing, man, that's insanity. So how long can we continue to keep nitpicking at each other or continue to keep glorifying the poisons that have defaced our communities? Everything that we talk about is the reason why our community is in the shape it's in. You know what I'm saying? Here it is. We talk bad about the drug dealers. I mean, the drug users, but we praise the drug dealers. Right. They both addicted to dope. Right. Something. <laughs> you get what Straight I'm saying? Straight up. Yeah. Like, but but we don't we don't look at life like we that. We don't look at it like that. Because you see one nigga getting money and you see another nigga broke using on dope. Mm-hmm. You like, 
Ah, oh, that nigga on dope. He, he. And that's how people look at it. Like when you deal with like youngsters, all they give a fuck about like, bro, who are you? They praise him. <laughs> like, they praise in the bag. Like, it don't matter. Like you could be like you could tell like, bro, that was the nigga. Nobody care about. They don't that, care man. about that. Here it is. This brother could be going to school, going to become a lawyer, or a doctor, and they like, ah, oh, nigga, you hella square. Straight but, up. But they'll be looking at the dude that's for setting himself up to go to jail. Mm -hmm. We'll get more love for the dude that gets out of jail than the dude that gets out of college. So our whole mind and our whole perspective has been warped Fucked up. into thinking that the poisons should be praised. The nigga come home like, oh, yeah, my nigga just got out of jail doing 18 years. Yeah. Nigga be like, oh, bro, that's big. What's so big about that? Right. You're a failed criminal. Right. Ignorant. You're somebody that has failed in life and for <laughs> right. your 18 years. And, they, and right. not laughing at it. My brother no, been in jail 30 years. Yeah. But you're a failed criminal. Right. There's no reward for that. Mm -mm. But when you say it like that, oh, you square. Oh, you, oh, nigga, you suck. That nigga stood right. up 30 years for, for what? Mm -hmm. 30 years of his life wasted for criminal indulgence. You're not and a good criminal. And we glorify and we, that but shit. But we glorify that. Right. Meanwhile, this sister or this brother got four degrees, one on two degrees, and we be like, oh, that square ass nigga think he's better than everybody else. Our minds are warped. And then we'll rob that nigga. For sure. Right. <laughs> for sure. Or we'll say, free my nigga, and when he come home, we'll put him back in a position to go right back to jail. Right. And so when somebody talks about this, Mm -hmm. It's crazy. We could go sit down with every, we could you we, something simple, and and this might rub people the wrong way, but we'll sit up and watch the Jeffrey Dahmer stuff on Netflix and say, "Yo, that nigga was crazy." But we know a serial killer in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We know a nigga that got five, six bodies right now. Right. But that's bruh. Oh, that's my nigga, bruh. That bruh, that nigga a fool. Nigga, that nigga's a serial killer. Right. <laughs> Seriously. But we not gonna. But nobody gonna talk about it like that because you a square ass nigga. Right. You acting like you ain't from the hood. I know exactly where I'm from, and I know exactly where I'm from. Why it got me thinking like this? What do knowledge yourself mean to you? Understanding your wrongs, understanding what you once have participated in, learning who you are, learning what you are, mm -hmm. and and utilizing that as uh, a stepping stone to become a better version of yourself. Okay. Got you. Because knowledge without application is just information. Hmm. We must understand that. That's a bar. Knowledge without application is just information. I can Sorry. give you all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't apply it, you just yeah. know a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> and then even all of those three components without understanding, we have nothing. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have an understanding of what you have become knowledgeable about, then there's no comprehension. So you just have variables that are lost. What's your biggest regret? Because you were just talking about, we, bro, because it's crazy because you was, you, you. So when I first heard about you, rest in peace to my nigga, Ruben Lewis. Rube, he was a hooper. And you was battling motherfucking, uh, rest in peace to, uh, what's Selsky? Uh, Killer Keys. Killer Keys. Y'all was battling against each other, right? And then... We heard y'all, Vaughn was up here, blood. y'all was on a Friday night, and y'all was going at it. And that's how I heard about it. He was like, bro, that's my nigga. That's my nigga, Mr. Fab. So that's the first time I heard about you. So at your, it was crazy. You went from that, maybe like you, and then I remember you had came back to the station. You had, you was promoting Nig Latin. Vaughn let you back on. You feel me? You was, you was pushing the Nig Latin. I think. I didn't know Gary at the time, but uh, uh, legend Gary, legendary Gary was up here pushing a hard line for you. And then all of a sudden, bro, you you came with a fucking hit. Super sick with it. Was it super sick? Yeah, super sick with it. You came out of nowhere, and like you said, you dropped, you were dropping whatever the fuck you wanted. You and Tito Bell was touring all over. Is that your biggest regret Making songs like Shabuba La Boopy when you felt like you could have made more of a, a, a more uh, intellectual impact on society at the time. Is that one of your biggest regrets or you tell me? Not at all. Okay. I love those records. Those records were a reflection of the times that we were living in. <laughs> you know, those records were, they, they were dope. <laughs> Club excited. Yeah. Great energy. Um, we were able to talk about the stuff that we were actually doing. Being young kids out there having fun, being right. at the side show. Um, <clears throat> and those are fun times. I'll, yeah. I'll never regret those records. All those time. records were very exciting. Um, but what you have to learn is that you have to learn to put 
candy and the medicine. Okay. So if it was me making songs like that to be able to go get a microphone to talk in front of 2,000 kids, that was great because when I, to- when I spoke in front of those kids, I never talked about those songs. Right. That influence at the time gave me a chance to get to them. All right. And sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. You have straight to speak up. their language. As I said, you have to meet people where they are. The beauty of brothers like Malcolm X Man. was they knew the language. They knew how to talk jive. They knew slick talk. They yeah, knew. He did. And then he learned the language of the world of being communicative, being able to communicate with all walks of life. And that gave him a special ability. That gave him an ability that no one had. So if I was using those songs and once I got that crowd, I always spewed words of wisdom. They'll tell you, that'll take you back from being, being a kid. Mm-hmm. I've always spewed that. Um, but now I don't have to do that dance anymore. Mm. Like I don't, I don't have to come up to the wash your back podcast yeah. with, with, with jury on to, to sell a image to you. Right. I don't have to do that no more. Like I'm, I'm comfortable with who I am. Like you know what I mean. Right. And I'm, and and to my brothers that are still in that mode, that's nothing knocking it. Right. It's just where I am at. I don't, I don't have to do that no more. And gotcha. I feel like at that time, I was marketing an image to be able to get them to see what I was doing. The plan has always been to, to teach, mm-hmm. to help, to build, to learn. Um, but sometimes, you have to penetrate how you have to penetrate it. Straight up. No, I got you on that one. Uh, we sitting here with me with Mr. Fab, a.k.a. Fabby Davis Jr. on the Wash Your Back podcast, man. It's Phil Mike in this motherfucker. Uh, let's talk about the hyphy movement. What did the hyphy movement mean to you? And kind of like, what do you think it did for your career? Put me in a position that I hadn't been yet. Stalin always say, all I need, all I need is one. Dude, this is my Jay Stalin voice. All you need is one, Mike. You get that one. He be t- we know I fuck with AK Frank. He be like, you get that one? Tell Frankie get that one? He'll eat for life. You had like seven, nigga. <laughs> I, had, I had a lot of records. Um, I had a lot of records, man. Um, I loved it, man. I could tell. I, I, I loved it based off the fact of because it was organic. You know, we live in times where... Before you go, can I say this one thing? Fab and Tito Bell was so different. They like the regular nigga, like you know, we was right. I was with Quid and Best. Them niggas come out with some hood shit. Fabby was ahead of his time. He was like giving you a show. He only, and then it's crazy because your shit would build. One time I see you got like you already got two or three songs. Next time you got more songs. You adding songs. You be like play this Tito. You playing rock songs. Your power was crazy. I just had to say that before I forget. I be forgetting right. here sometimes. Right, but go ahead. Song. I'm sorry. We did a great thing. We put on good shows. Man. Yeah, I did. Know, Tito Bell was a, a hell of a DJ. Very charismatic. Great energy. I love that kid till this day. Um, and we went out and put on a show every night. Um, and as you say, the sets got larger. It went from you got five minutes to you got nine minutes. You got 13 minutes. You got 20 minutes. We need an hour out you. Oh, shit. So in that time, it was like, damn, we got to really put on a show. So me and him <laughs> would sit up. How can we go out and put on a good show? Um, but, uh, it was beautiful, man. Like we had fun, Mike, like what, 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 people, people will say, <laughs> this is hip hop for you. And my brother Manny said this, man, my, my, my brother Manny event, man, um, Manny was telling me something that was very funny. He say, we'll knock the Rilla, you know, the, 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 the Costa man, the Rilla <laughs> man, you feel me? Like he said something like hip hop said they didn't want no studio gangsters. But then when Will Smith and MC Hammer was being themselves, they got dissed. Like, That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? Like, here's hip-hop saying, right. don't be a studio gangster. Be a real. But you got a Will Smith coming out. Right. You got an MC Hammer coming out. Ah, oh, man, them niggas corny. Yeah. So, what, where, so what do you want me to be? Well, yeah, exactly. Damn if I do, damn if I don't. So during the hyphy movement, when people started backlashing it, the backlash of it was, oh, man, that shit corny. That, this, this, is, this is that, right? And all of those came from because it wasn't working for them. <laughs> they were failing. And so the individual got mad. They, yeah. they tried it. It didn't work for them. And then the greatest thing that they can do is talk bad about it. 
And now that them talking bad about it, you get people like me who it's working for. Mm -hmm. I'm flourishing. But now, oh, that nigga corny, that nigga this, he this. How is he corny when if he was sitting up lying about how many niggas he shot? That would be cool. even cornier. Like that's to me, that would have been cornier. Yeah. So here it is. I'm a you, kid. You keeping it real. I'm a kid. We're right. talk, I'm talking about the side show. We was at the side show. Right. You ask anybody that was outside at side shows. <laughs> Fab was at side shows. Right. We talk about getting kicked out the club. We was them young dudes coming fifty deep to the club, wow. getting kicked out. Like you know what I'm saying? We so you know we 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 talk about all the things. Fatty Addy right here, them dudes was, I was a young dude, mess picking me up every day. These is like, these. Is, I'm in Filmo every day as a kid. So we outside, we, 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 we watching this. So what do you want me to, what, what do you want me to talk right. about? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, I can only be me, my nigga. What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> what you so, want me to lie? So now that I'm corny for right. being the That'd voice. That would be the corniest shit ever, you to lie, yeah. So. I, I never I never understood that backlash, but I never allowed it to make me become the bitter individual. I told him, hey, man, I was happy with what I was doing, and I was happy what we accomplished with what we did. I got a chance to go all around the world, bro. Man. You know what I'm saying? I went all around the world, man. I got went to places that I could only dream of. I had fun. I met people. I became uh, a spokesman for this area. And um, when that voice was muted, you began to see the difference. When my voice was muted, you begin to see, um, you begin to see it fizzle out. Yeah. And I'm not saying um, that I was the only voice that was keeping us afloat, but I was the new voice. I was yeah. the fresh voice. I was the voice that had an ability to, to articulate what we were actually doing by lived experience. Do you think people was afraid of that because you were who you were and you did what you did and you did have that influence? But, like, a lot of our rappers, they necessarily couldn't communicate the way that you knew know how to communicate. Yeah. Very, you know, preacher-like. Right. Um, do you think that's one of the reasons why you got backlash from the radio, like, Camille included? There's a multitude of reasons. Um, for me to put it all on somebody else's insecurities or them feeling threatened, that would be... Uh, very egotistical of me because that would be void of my involvement right of the things that i did think, to lead you, to that what do you think was the the main thing the I, riff i think the riff came from being a young guy who felt as if here i am how can you do this to me right um if you're in the jungle you're not exempt because you feel like you're tarzan or you feel like your tarzan ass could get bit too like, you know what I'm saying? Tarzan, mm -hmm. he may have a great, he may be the rhino whisperer or he may be the lion whisperer, but, you know, it's, it's there are animals and creatures out there that, like, fuck Tarzan, I don't fuck with Tarzan. Right. So sometimes Tarzan feels like, oh, I'm the king of the jungle. I can do anything. I can swing on any vine. I can talk to any snake. And when you're young, you're arrogant, um, you have... You're walking with like them. I can do no wrong. Right. Everything I'm doing, I'm making records. Like I hit killing shit. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We get money. I just signed with Atlantic Records. Sometimes your arrogance can be, um, you can slight people, and you can slight people just based off who you are. And and I'm not telling anyone to dim their light. Mm -hmm. Don't dim your light, but be mindful. Right. You know, be, be mindful of that. So, um, I'm not gonna act like I didn't do anything wrong. I probably. Right. I probably did slight some people. I probably right. did, you know, but those are beautiful things and it led to what it led to and um, it just made me stronger and smarter. If you did know people, this motherfucker had a his own radio show. Rest in Peace Hot Chocolate was his producer. Uh, Mr. Fab had a radio show on 94.9. You forgot about that, huh? No, nah, Matt was my radio Matt, 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 my bad, yeah, my Hot bad. Chocolate Magic was, Matt. I think Hot Chocolate was on Cameo. Well, Hot Ch I thought Hot Chocolate used to send. Oh, he he was doing forty. Yeah, he was. That's doing 40. right. My yeah, bad. Yeah, he was doing my forty. Bad. I had Magic Matt. That's right. Uh, Magic Matt. Shout out Magic Matt one time. He's uh, still here too. What was Delicious D? The, this this. What was his name? The other guy. Del was it Delicious D? Something like that. It was some weird. Oh, names I know what you're talking about. I knew, I, I forgot yeah, his name though. But me and Magic Matt. Magic Matt was uh was my producer. Magic Matt and uh and Jeff. We actually did some. We did. Our show was the number one show. <laughs> Your show was kind of dope. You had the number one lie. show. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah I like how he said that. <laughs> no, I did. He, he said that. I had the number one show. No, I did. I had the number one show. Straight like, up. And you can know. go back and you can fact check it. Yeah. Um, But uh, 
I mean, this is transparency. This is years later, man. You know, me and Vaughn talk now. Yeah. We sit up and we talk. Yeah. At the time, Vaughn explained to me something that was, it wasn't clear to me then because I didn't get it. Um, but when you get older, you understand what it is. And the conversation, you know, me and Vaughn's relationship was like drumline. Mm. And I was Nick Cannon where I may not have knew how to read music, but I was a hell of a musician. Right. I didn't know how to read code, but I could play them drums exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And I may not have been technical with the X's and O's, but him as a band leader, he was more so like, I want to get you to become this version. But even in his tutelage, maybe he didn't have an ability to articulate that that well. Right. And he probably was like, dude. He you, was younger, too. He was younger as well. Yeah, like, exactly. you dope. We know you dope, man. You, okay, your, your average is somebody else's greatness. Mm -hmm. And you got that. You good. But why you're you're flaunting it in a way in a level where you're making me interrogate what it is that I'm doing. Right. And so here it is, I go get a radio show, same time that you're on on your biggest slot, and now these ratings I'm threatening. After I leave radio, I can go back and do music. If I put the rate the ratings in the level where now and I'm so threatening that you lose your job. Now you're like, damn, bro, I just lost my job because you wanted to come over and do some radio stuff mm -hmm. when you could have went and did your, like, you didn't have to do that. And it wasn't saying that, oh, damn, I can't do radio because you're doing radio. It's just at the time, what I had to get back and realize, radio was all he had at that moment. And now if you're coming in, then you have to deal with the fact of now you're competition. Mm -hmm. You're not just Fab the rapper no more. You're Fab the radio personality that's going up against my show on the late night, and if your ratings are better than mine, you're damn near risking me my job. Right. So I have to respond in the way that I have to Accordingly. respond. Accordingly. Mm -hmm. So maturity allows me to see it through that lens. Got you. You know what I mean? And and those are the things that you get caught up in the crossfire of radio politics, and I had to learn firsthand. And it cost me about 14, 15 years and millions of dollars. But what I've lost in that, I've gained in spirituality and, and, and the mental knowledge, wisdom, and comprehension, as well as understanding. That's what's up, man. Uh, Film on Mike here. We got Mr. Fab in the billing. Uh, Want to get to some things. Uh, talk about like some music shit, or or just like how would like like just just dive into hella different categories. Uh, working with the Jacka, my favorite rapper. Yeah, that's my favorite rapper. Yeah, um, still to this day, dope as fuck. Like I got the Jack tatted on my arm. Like oh wow. Favorite. Like I love, I love the Jack. Um, yeah, man. The Jack, bless uh, his spirit, his legacy, his kids, his beautiful mother, um, his sister, and everybody else that had contributed to you know him making music. And and Jack was just, Jack was that to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it's crazy because when I get asked the question about, people say weird stuff like, "Who did you love more, Mac Dre or Jack?" And I, I don't I don't think you you yeah. know who do you love more is not the necessary you know the right. thing but um because I love both of those guys both of those guys were um, very influential in my life um but I was like Dre dying was like your uncle dying uh -huh. it's like damn I died like that's my, you know what I'm saying that's, right. my, that's my name right. Jack dying was like your brother dying. Man. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it hit a little different. Yeah. And I didn't get a chance to spend as much time as I with, with Dre as I did Jack. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Me and Jack were super, super duper close. I kind of met Dre on the tail end of things. Right. So I didn't get a chance to spend that. And, you, and did you kind of think with Dre, and because you were younger, you kind of think like, man, I'm going to be with Dre for... You took it for granted. Exactly. We talked about that earlier. Exactly. We talked about you're in the studio with this guy every day and we only have one song together because you wouldn't, you just like, that's Dre, cut it. <laughs> like, every niggas love be, Dre. Yeah. Like, you feel me? I got, I, I got all day to, got, to do yeah. records with Dre. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and so that's why I say, bro, it's, 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 it's very, we live in times where, bro, you have to be very embracive to those that you love and let them know not only do you love them, but if you see them going down the crash course, do whatever you can to prevent them from doing that because we need to save as many minds and souls as we have. 
for to prepare ourselves for what we're up against. Mm-hmm. We're up against a lot of stuff. And so as musicians, man, I just wish that, you know, that's a big regret. Right. Not doing records with Dre. I wish we could have done more records. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, hell yeah. But like Jack, man, recording with Jack was always amazing, bro. It was always dope. I was just sitting in the studio and just watching work and be like, damn, this nigga's so dope to me. Right. Um, And then being on the road, like I said, I got a chance to go to Europe with Jack. I got a yeah. chance to go to several different countries and see the Jack that a lot of people didn't get a chance to see, you know, catching him in, in prayer, watching him and meditation watching him and 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 his truest purest form um a comedian off time and um man just a good guy man and, and and i often think of him a lot man because uh as i say man i i just wish that the world would have got a chance to get a, to to know him like uh many of us got a chance to know him. right and then uh can you i'm trying to remember cuz i remember chuck would always tell me i think he, he would tell me about this trip to seattle hilarious and everybody like it was like it was hella Bay Area cats that they just they done went to Seattle. Oh, yeah. Can you just tell me about that? Because I think you got that famous picture with you and Dre on stage. I think that's it. That's not that's, okay. I that always was, ask you that. Always no, ask that you was, that. Always be that wrong was at as the, fuck uh, too. What was the pool hall around here in the TLs back in the day? Oh, Eddie? you talking about the one off of Eddie Street? What was that? What was that? Tell you remember the, it was a pool Billards? hall Billards. right there. Billards. Boom, yep. right there. Boom, yep. right there. So that was at Billards. Yeah, uh, but um. So a lot of people, when they, you know, when when you go back in history, and certain people that was there, certain people that may not have been there, they they rewrite history to okay. to how they go. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? So people are like, yo, we was on tour with Dre. We actually were on tour with Nicotina. Okay. So it was a Nicotina tour. Got you. And um, we was up in Seattle, and it was it was like the whole Bay Car, <laughs> bro. Like, bro, we. Quinn, your boy, your boy Jack, yeah. Hustler, Quinn. I mean, Mac Maw, Keek, wow. Little Bruce, uh, Wow, uh, a, a Doobie. I'm talking PSD. I mean, it was everybody, it was everybody, uh. everybody, right? Um, none of us are, you know, none of us are like superstars. It, it's it's Nicotina, it's Mac Dre, <laughs> right. you know, Jack. Of course, the my figures, you right. know, they are huge up there in Seattle, right. and then. Um, the trickle down of you know, Everybody. okay, you got yours, you got yours, you uh, cool, okay, we know right. you, we know you, right. you, we ain't really heard of you, we, okay, we know you, right? But we're staying at the Howard Johnson. <laughs> we at the Howard Johnson, bro. I'm like Dre, where you going? He like, Cuddy, I got a room at the Hyatt, Cuddy. I can't be, <laughs> can't be around here with you. You niggas are savages, Cuddy. <laughs> Cuddy, you want to come to the Hyatt? <laughs> I got about two hundred dollars in my pocket. I ain't, you feel me? Right. I'm, I'm. I'm Hurting for certain. Right. And uh, he like, Cuddy, why well, I'm finna go to 13 Coins and go get something to eat? You coming? So I jump in. Chuck jump in the front seat. We just talking. Chuck plotting, you know, because Chuck is at the time doing promotion and parties and stuff. Yeah. So he's like trying to throw big parties out here. And um, excuse me, I apologize. Not trying to throw. He's throwing. Yeah, the Dundee party. parties yeah, back in the day. He's throwing the party. He's doing a, um, he's setting up the record release party at uh, Mission Rock. Mission Rock mm-hmm. for Dre. And um, they in the front seat. We just riding around. We watching cartoons and we listening to Pink Floyd. <laughs> when, what? When it's that ain't some Mac Dre shit. I don't when, know what it is. We, we, we watching Savoir <laughs> Fair, and uh, we watch. We listening to Pink Floyd. Wow. And, um, and I'm in the back seat. We in a G wagon, and we just talking. It's the first time I hit a backwood, and uh, he like, Cuddy, you know how to roll a backwood, Cuddy? I'm like. I'm like, shit, if it's like rolling the blunt, I know how to roll it. He like, no, nah, Cuddy. Yeah, I know, he like, for real. He like, Cuddy, it's my last wood, Cuddy. <laughs> I'm trusting you, Cuddy. Man. So, so he give it to me. Give me hella weed, bro. He give me damn near like an eighth. I'm like, bro, you want to roll all this in this way? <laughs> Cuddy, do not roll one of them skinny things you be smoking on, Cuddy. <laughs> all of the weed in there, Cuddy. So I'm rolling the weed in the back seat, him and Chuck talking. We sitting about twisted at one. I'm like, this cool. He like, he like, oh, all right, Cuddy. He like, fire it up. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, I don't fuck with Woods. He like, Cuddy, you roll it, you smoke it. Off time. He was like, Off time. like, I'm not smoking it if you don't hit it first, Straight Cuddy. Up. <laughs> so I don't know what you got going on back there. Right. Cracking jokes, right? right? So I'm like, he's like, I'll get the lighter. He's like, but before you hit it, Cuddy, don't hit it like a swisher, Cuddy. You're going to pay for it. <laughs> 
Ooh, it's right. like like my whole chair blew right. like a nigga that fired on me. Right. Whole chest cave and he like, Cuddy, I told you, Cuddy. <laughs> he cracking up. He like, you Cuddy, give me my weed, Cuddy. For you drop the Man, I'm talking about that was, the wood hit me, killed me. Right. Boom. I'm like, oh I'm like, Cuddy, pull over, Cuddy. <laughs> like, you can't take I it. I can't breathe. I'm right. Like, Cuddy roll the window down. I start right. sweating and hell and shit. Yeah. So we in there cracking up, Chuck dying. You know, Chuck don't smoke or nothing. Nah. Chuck dying. He like, he like, Cuddy, you can't do this, Cuddy. <laughs> it's like, it's like, how old is you anyway, Cuddy? I don't even think I'm supposed to be smoking with you, Cuddy. <laughs> so that shit was just funny, man. It's just just crazy memories, man. Dude That's was crazy. really like, dude was like really our Snoop Dog, man. Like I would have really wished the world would have got a chance to really get a drift of Dre, man. Dre, Dre, Dre was Ooh, charismatic bro. out this world the greatest, this charisma, bro, charisma just crazy just like just pure natural energy just a man just a great dude man so right i'm just you know i'm I'm very thankful even for because you that got little that, time. that little but you kind of like a piece of that connection right you know what i'm saying right. like when people be like bro you knew mac dre right you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, we idolize Mac Dre out here in the Bay. Like, all of those brothers, like, but, you know, the connections with Jack. Yeah. With Dre. Like, with Tracks a Million. I was just finna go you know to him saying? right now. I was yeah. just finna go to him, like, working with Tracks a Million. When y'all yeah. put that together, uh, mm-hmm. the track that y'all did. Side Show. Side Show. That's his biggest record. That is? I think so. Wow. I think that's his that's biggest crazy, blood. That, that was like. Another of ahead of his time track. It just came. It came about. Um, we was at the ambassadors lounge. Wow. And um, he would tracks a million would walk around with this shirt that said tracks a million. He did. And <laughs> he would. This just, is like during the super hyphy. This is. But did people know? I think remember because remember when super hyphy came out was was. Do you tell me? A lot of people thought it was EA Ski on the beat. Most definitely. Nobody, because nobody had knew who tracks him in. Right, was. exactly. And then, so they were trying. We were trying to find out. And remember, videos were so expensive back then. Everybody wasn't shooting videos. Nah, they weren't. So, and then we didn't have you know the social media like we do now to be able to to put uh, faces to names. And so, we didn't know. So tracks a million with just being in the club with his you know with his tracks right. a million shirt on and. He be going up to folks like, man, man, I'm Trax Million. I do beats, man. Let me give you a BCD. Uh-huh. And um, he saw me, and I'm like, Trax, what's up, man? When we gonna do something, bro? <laughs> that is you too. He like, he like, oh, Fabi, it's good, bro. I'm going to Knicks after this, so we was going to official studios. And he was like, man, I'm gonna go to Knicks right after we leave here. He like, bro, see if you could bring short, bro. That'd be big. I'm like, oh man, you know, let me see, let me let me see what he on, man. I'm like, if is it. There's going to be some bitches out there. Right. <laughs> I'm like, What's yeah. my favorite word? I'm like, I'm like, listen, you know, short going to come if you're going to get some bitches up there. Straight up. So he like, uh, he like, yeah, 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 it's going to be lit. So we get over there. He called me. He like, um, he like, bro, there's bitches over here. <laughs> there probably is like only like one broad over there, right? At the time, we get over there. All the girls from the Pink Poodle over there by the time we get there. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, come on, Pops. I'm like, Pops, let's go to the uh, studio. Blah, 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 blah. He's like, man, there's some bitches over there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. He's like, all right, all right, all right, come on. We end up going to the studio and track first beat he played. I was like, ooh, that's wow. hard. And I'm like, ooh. That was the first beat? First beat he played. Wow. I'm like, ooh, this hard. I'm like, ooh, we go think I'm at the side show. He's like, ooh, what's that? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just freestyling. I'm like, he like, go lay that. So I laid it. Jeez. Short like, oh, that's hard. <laughs> that shit was so hard. <laughs> and, and then years later, Trax told me, he was like, you know, that was Cassie beat. He was like, I just replayed the Cassie beat. I was like, what beat? He was like, between me and What was that Cassie song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, tell me how you like it. Tell me. Tell me. That wow. One. And if you look, I was like, bro, that is, huh? That is. He said, I just added some blah, 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 blah to it. And uh, that shit was crazy. He added tomato ace to it. That's And sick. that was it. That would, um, yeah, man, Trax is uh, gone too soon. Special. 
Tracks is a person I really like to consider a friend. Yeah. Super humble. Yeah, yeah. Like, he was like a... Man, dude was different, man. Dude was dude was such a great, a great individual. Like, it was like... You know what I'm saying? Like, he was one of them different dudes, bro. He was... I, I know what you mean. I mean, I was cool with tracks, and I got cool with him trying to trying to find some beats for Quinn for him. And he was just so, like, down to earth and always ready to work. Like, he'll always be like, bro, let's work. Let's go. Let's, do, let's go to the studio. Tell Quinn to pull up. I remember one time we was trying to get a beat for Quinn from Rick Rock. We tried to get the beat from Rick Rock. Rick Rock kept holding the beat for whatever reason. He wouldn't give up the beat, but we had the song. So we told, we just told Tracks Me like, bro, just remake the beat. Don't make the same beat. Just kind of like keep the the sound and shit. So he was willing to do it, bro. Tracks Millions was always ready to work, but I'm I trying love to look Tracks at our Million. last text message. Like I'm trying to find it, like, and it just kind of defines who Tracks a Million yeah, is, the type of person he is. Yeah, yeah. like. I fuck with tracks a million. Like our, right? our last text message was something like, "Okay, boom." September twentieth, I say I'm just checking on you. You say, "Man, it's been a roller coaster for me, but I'm pushing through it." I'm like, "Uh, I'm like, bro, he had sent me a picture. I'm like, man, I ain't really feeling too good." Yeah. Um, I said, he said, "Man, I got a doctor's appointment around nine, and I'll be back." I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna deliver you some uh." Like, I had sent some groceries to him. Yeah. At the house, he had moved downtown. And I had dropped some groceries off at the house for him, you know, because it was just like he was having trouble, yeah. you know, moving around and exactly. stuff. And nobody kind of knew what level he was at right. at that time. But I would see him frequently because he he lived right down the street from the Dope Bear store. And, um, and in that, I would be like, he would be riding his bike, and I would notice, like, Tracks, what's up? Like, he never talked about it to nobody. Yeah. And um, uh, he was just, I'm like, what what you need? He's like, bro, just send me some milk, some water, some eggs. Yeah. And it wasn't that he was hurting financially. It's just his mobility had been altered. Got you. And um, Fuck cancer. Yeah, man, that just, that's just, that's, that's a, a real, real friend of mine, man. And so, Definitely. like, Trax was, uh, you know, his son is rapping now, and his son is super dope. Um, Just trying to keep the memory alive, man. That kind of really affected People like PK that, yeah, you know, everybody that PK kind of like mm -hmm. has helped and done yeah. great things for his past. Definitely. Like he lost his best friend. Right. Both of them. You know, right. Jack, right. Jack and Trax. Track, so yeah. It's tough, man. Yeah. On my new album, I got a record with Jack and Trax. Okay. And that's like, I think the first time that they've ever both rapped on the record. Okay. Wow. Yeah. People, like, a lot of people didn't know Trax and Million was yeah, rap. Trax was dope, His favorite rapper was Busta Rhymes. He was like, my favorite rapper, Busta Rhymes. Trax was like, dope, wow, man. People don't know that Trax was from New, New Jersey. New Jersey. That's right. So, you know, Trax was like a real hip hop head, man. So, yeah, man. I mean, not, not even to try to, you know, somber up the moment, man. But those two dudes, man, of course, when you go down memory lane, man, you begin to, you know, you're saddened by the fact of, damn, we're still here and you kind of feel like, survivors guilt a little bit but mm -hmm. recognizing their greatness and continuing to keep their memories alive man that's what that's what the beauty of, of you know music is about man so we're gonna always keep it lit for them too hey one of the things that helps when you do podcasts is when people say shit about other people for sure so i'm gonna say ask you two i'm gonna give you two names and you just say especially we got fatty eddie and we got my nigga uh mo in the billing big mo in here tell me something about shine t and Messy Marv. <laughs> I talked to Shanti this morning. Wow. The legend. Um, <laughs> I to EPA's Sean. own. Big shout out to EPA. Big shout Definitely. out to all the brothers out there in EPA. Um, he's still in the A, right? Yeah, he's in the A, man. Gotcha. Sean is, um, my message to him was, I said this this morning, I said, bro, can we do an album together, bro? You could keep 70, 30. <laughs> For real, though. I was like, it ain't about the money. I just want to work with you. Man. You're my favorite. He your like, favorite producer? For sure. Man. He like, He's sick. He like, <laughs> he like, let's do it, little bro. I'm going to shoot you something today. That's hard. And so I just text him at 748 today. Wow. Like, Nigga, I'm in the studio all night. Nigga, with the beats straight at? Straight up, straight up. So Sean T is like, man, Sean, Sean T is so dope because it was like at the time when we thought that Mess was getting beats from like Battle Cat, 
We thought Mess was getting beats from like, you know, <laughs> right. Fred Rec and Dr. Dre. All those times we thinking Mess was getting beats from right. all of them. He like, we like, ooh, this he like this that battle cat shit, little right, bro. Right. Like, you know, Mess coming to get me. I'm a young nigga, so I'm just he like, yeah, this something I never sound Mess like say battle. anything. He messed to say anything, especially, you know, he got the mic. He he going crazy. He like, yeah, this shit sound like that battle right. cat shit, huh? Right. This that Dr. Dre shit. Right. I'm like, nigga, this hard. Straight up. All of the thug politics and all yeah. the shit. It's me. It's Fatty Addy. It's, it's uh, Wild Bill. It's Looch. These all of you feel me? This the coalition at the time back right. in the day. Like you feel me? We all just sliding around. Mess got the van. Uh, he got the old white van. Remember the white van? We in a van. Um, and we just this. I think we pushing like thug politics or something at the time. Can't remember what album it was. Just the one with the flag. Yeah, yeah, with the, the flag American, with the bandana, yeah, the American okay. bandana. Got you. And uh, we had the all night market. We had the barbecue spot on third. This one, when moms and they, we had the barbecue spot. Um, so the whole time he like, yeah, this slap right here, little yeah, bro. Listen, yeah. so the beach knocking hella yeah, hard. Yeah. <laughs> so then we go to Hayward one day, and we go to uh, we go to Shanti house, uh, and he played one of the beats. I'm like, this nigga, that's nigga. you making right, that beat right, this whole right. time. Yeah. <laughs> He like, I don't think I got no status at this time. I'm a young nigga. I'm just mm -hmm. probably just sitting back, just riding with, you know, Mesh used to just like riding with the young niggas. It kept him fresh. He did, he did, yeah. He got slang, he got him, you know, he just fucked with the young niggas. Yeah. Hella laughing, hella funny. He was smart on that. On and that, we looked on up that. to him, we yeah. idolized him. Right. Like, and we was like, nigga, you know, you, yep. you the dude. So right. we, 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 with, we with the whatever movement with you. Facts. And, um, and I told Shanti, I think one of those days, I was like, man, one day we going to do some music together, man. That's sick. He like, you be rapping, little bro? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Manifested some shit for, for sure, real. man. So real. with both of those dials, man, I mean, you know, regardless, people see Mess nowadays and they look at an opportunity to kick him right down. And um, Mess was a dude that was very influential. And, and there's no denying that at one point in time, Messi might have been the hottest artist in California. Like I'm talking about, and at least from Fresno up, mm -hmm. we say from Fresno to Sac. He definitely had a a, a cold Ain't ass no run. It. Ain't no doubt about it. Big Mo, no, there's no doubt about it. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying, and and even even in the differences of you know of he and I throughout right. the years, right? That was always my big bro, man, because I knew that what was coming was just the changing of power. You know, when certain individuals go in and, and you become. Not the, you know, not the, the, the term when your idols become your rivals, not that. But when you become to a certain level, it becomes competition now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's friendly competition. Right. It's ne never nothing threatening or physical or something where I feel I had to right. fear for my life. But it was more so you ain't just little Stanley no more. You, you know, fab. Are you in the league now. You in the league now, nigga. So, and, and, and we playing against other teams. So if you come in here, if I foul you hard... Don't take it personal. Right. Nigga, go stronger. You know, go harder when you come right. up in here. Nigga, this ain't no easy layup. Right. And so, you know, they made us They made us prepare our game like that. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. I don't want you here all night. But, uh, who like, for me, during the hyphy, hyphy movement, I just feel like it was a lot more camaraderie. Uh, It started to, I don't know if people got frustrated with, whatever but it started to break up towards the end um my question to you is is how did okay so i think you said this before you and you and yuck yuck mouth you didn't y'all cool now right but you didn't fall out with yuck mouth it was more so the other way around or what happened can you tell me what happened with you and yuck mouth nothing yuck. nothing yuck's a legend Okay, I thought I thought I thought I heard something about you and Yuck was beefing or some shit like that. Yep. That's what I I didn't I didn't understand it because I thought he was on the bed on the hospital bed and then they was like they made a you guys made amends or something like that. Yeah, come on, so legend man. I know he a legend. That's my guy. For okay, sure. okay for Shelly. Uh, what's up with uh your freestyle battles? We got a battle rap coming up October twenty eighth. But I'm saying as far as like not like what's up with him. Who did you? You from Oakland? It's, we don't have a lot of freestylers on the West Coast. Nah, we got like corrupt freestylers. You feel me, Ron? Rapping Ron. Okay, okay, okay. Let me know. I, mean, I saw him freestyling one day, and, and Short tells me he's like, "You cool, but you can't fuck with Ron." Wow. 
So I'm like, what, nigga? I'm like, man, I'm the illest nigga ever, nigga. He's like, listen, man, that nigga was different. Right. And I'm like, man, man, I'm supposed to compete with somebody that's gone, man. I'm right, like, nigga, straight I, up. I'm like, now and I'm like, now and I'm like, nigga, bring him back together in AI, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But that was motivation, man. But I, I would just hear stories, like, from all his friends and everything okay. about how it was like, nigga, Ron to be on the bus, nigga, and rap from the 90s to the dubs, nigga, nonstop. Like, wow, you know what I'm saying? So, wow. man, big shout out to the legends, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, rapping Ron and, and, and Diddley and individuals that represented. But like you say, I grew up like a, being from Oakland, I'm like a real super hip hop head, man. Yeah. So I would I would always just be listening to like, you know, the Wu-Tang and everything. I was, you know, pants leg rolled up in school, mm-hmm. you know, thinking I'm just straight from the East Coast. I'm, I'm wearing Tim's. Right. <laughs> Boots, like, you feel me? Army <laughs> pants. I was like one of them niggas. Straight in up. In school, the Helly okay. Hansen coats, the A-Rex yeah. coats, the goggles on the head, like, just something. Right. You know, I probably even told a few bitches I was from New York right. when I was uh, like, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, I really, you know, you know, they used to Jerry for real. For sure. But, uh, nah, man, I, I, I always was a, a fan and, 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 and a kid of hip hop that I loved it, man. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I loved it immensely, man. And, and, I love everything about it. I yeah. love everything about it. I love DJing. I love b-boying. I love the dancing. I love the, the break dancing, the freestyling. I love graffiti. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. really a kid of hip hop, and 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 I, I carry that with me all the time. So, hell yeah, hell yeah, man. The, the the battling and freestyling all it all went with it. Do you like the freestyle? Do you like the do you like the freestyle? Just the freestyle on some like. I just want to have fun, or do you like to battle rap? No, nah, it don't matter. I'm with, okay. I, I love the off the head. Like today, I probably <laughs> rap for like ten minutes or something today on stage, like at the uh, at, at the Empire at, at the party. 50, and, 50th and it was crazy. Fiftieth anniversary, too short. And I was around so many iconic figures, man. Um, Spice One, Drew Down, uh, rapping Forte, man. You know who's a, a fucking super icon, and I don't, I feel like people don't give Forte his roses that he deserves. So let me give him this flower shop real quick, man. Fo, I love you so much for everything that you've done for hip hop. Thank you. For the culture. And I feel like nowadays, unfortunately, if you don't get a chance to keep up that status, then people will try to make it seem like you never were that status. Facts. And that's unfortunate. That's weak as fuck. That's weak as fuck. Yeah. Like, you feel me? Just because somebody, so Bathgate told me this years ago. We in the studio. He said, Fab, it's your time right now. And I'll give you that. He said, but you can't make it seem like my gold trophy and my gold medal still not a gold medal. He said, if I won a gold medal in 98, in 2028, it's still a gold, gold medal. medal. That's some real shit. And no matter what, no matter how many gold medals that you may be winning right now, you still can't just deny my gold medal. Right. And I'm not going to allow you to just make it seem like. Belittle it. I, belittle it. Like I hold that in high regards. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Regardless, I may not be competing at gold medal, gold medalist status now. Damn, right. But there was one point in my career where I was a gold medalist, and Definitely. you have to respect that. If you respect culture, yes, then you have to respect that. <laughs> for real, for real. And so anybody that respects culture, when you see an artist like Rapping Fote, you have to respect his gold medalist competition in a time where nobody was competing at that level. Right. He's on Tupac's All Eyes on Me Come album. On, bro. He's on Ghetto Dope with Master P. He's making records. He's putting on for his hood in the city. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He's filming. He's going all around the world. Players Club. Yeah. Come on, man. You you worldwide selling records around the world. So if you respect culture, respect those that have competed at gold medalist uh, competitions, regardless of where they are now. Right. And so to say that, man, um, in the aforementioned of what we were talking about, being around all those icons today. Even Keith Murray was there. That was crazy. Yeah. That was random as hell. (laughs) But, like, to see Keith Murray up there today, I was like, is that Keith Murray? (laughs) Like, that's crazy. I heard his voice and was like, yo, that's crazy. Keith Murray, I told him what I seen. I'm like, bro, nigga, I used to love that El Nino album. That was was crazy to hear Keith Murray up there today. And so... Um, I freestyle for like ten minutes today, just That's like freestyling, sick. just wilding. But but I love both. I love yeah. I love the traditional freestyling off the head, just topics like senseis, like um, um, man, the guys that 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 made it popular, like supernatural, yeah. individuals like that, and um, Juice from from Chicago. Oh, those guys that are about like Juice. super hip hop, you know, like like 
supernatural corrupt on the motherfucking wake up show guys like that like corrupt like corrupt and like supernatural is the the guru of it he tight like he's he's like he's the scientist he's he's one of my senseis yeah. the person that I, I watch and i study like man to watch how he's able to just go in and out of different styles he's he's he's, yeah. he's, he's arguably one of the greatest i like to see niggas that you would know freestyle freestyle like Catch some, him off guard. Yeah, like for real, like the Jack could freestyle. Jack was dope, man. You feel me? Jack was super uh, dope. I heard Quinn freestyle. Like I didn't really think Quinn could freestyle, but I heard Quinn freestyle. Them niggas, y'all niggas be y'all some rapping ass motherfuckers, bro. This y'all battle rap shit though. What's that? I love the battle rap shit now though because it's really more so about it. it's an art. Yeah, like now. the the battle rap shit is like performing arts. Yeah, it's like stage, it's it's theatrics. Sick. It's it's that like it's you, the pause in. It's dope. It's, like it's, it's the, real. It's like the, uh, it's a play. Yeah, like battle rap now yeah. is like a play, Co- like a choreograph. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and and if you like, I say once again, if you respect culture, if you respect like, to me, it's like it's Hamlet. It's you know what I'm saying. It's, it's Shakespearean kind of views with cultural arts and hip hop references. When you go to the studio, I'm asking you, do, do, do two short freestyle? No. He don't freestyle? Okay. Mm-hmm. When you go to the studio, though, you love to work. Yeah, Do yeah, you yeah, just be working. in there knocking songs out, like, back to back? Or Hell do you yeah. work on a song and you go to something else? Yeah, I be knocking. So I got my engine. Let me see. Bring him in here real quick. My engineer, Rick. I got one of my engineers in here. Like, we just... Hey, Rick. Rick, Rick, come here real quick. Uh... Hey, I want to, this is one of my engineers in here, man. Ricky brother, Rick, Slick my Rick. Brother. Uh, bro, White he, he boy said, Rick. Nah, he, I'm he, said, <laughs> he said, he said, when we work, when we work, it's just knocking out. In the past week, without me saying, how many songs we didn't did in the past week? Damn, man, like 70. Damn. 70 songs? That's just me and him. Right. Like, and I'm that's going, just you. That's just me and that's him. That's not like features for other people. That's just your project. How many songs, songs? bro? Damn. 70 songs, bro. Introduce yeah. yourself, man. Tell them who you is, man. It's one, he a producer as well. For Super sure. dope-ass engineer, too. What's going on, y'all? Uh, this is Ricasso. Like Like he said, producer, engineer. Uh, Hold on, Ricasso. And an artist. Yeah. Man, not really. Been <laughs> <laughs> making beats since uh, 2011. That's what's up. Playing music my whole life. So. That's what's up, bro. Yeah. Did you watch your back today, though? <laughs> the podcast day. called Watch Back. I talk to you every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I talk. He always like, oh, hold on. But, did not watch my back. But, God. but nah, bro. We, <laughs> me and him, bro, That's have done up. 70 songs. Wow. In the, past, in the past week. That's crazy. So just rocking. Like, we was at the studio before we came here. And, and, and it's just about working. Like, with me, it's just about stay working. And then, so in this past week, I've honestly probably done about 120 songs. <sighs> just this week. And it's not that I'm on a speed race or marathon. It's yeah. just that's how I'm working. Right. Uh, and, 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 and I'm having the lived experience to have content that continues to just pour over. How do you how do you tell an artist, hey, bro, let me write this for you? Because you got a lot of writing credits, correct? Am I not yeah. lying? Okay. Yeah. How do you tell Snoop, bro, let me write this? Snoop, I got a record I think you'll sound dope on. Got you. And at the level that he is in his career... It's not about if I wrote it, if I didn't write it, it's a hit record, it's a hit record. Got you. And you go on the record, you go on, when I go in the studio, sometimes I like I like to morph into character. <laughs> I think the ability, um, which is in the infancy stages of my career, was like a gift and a curse because it was me trying to find who I was. Mm-hmm. So I would have an ability to do everything. I would be able to emulate. Like if, my, if I was a superhero, if I was X-Men, I think my uncanny ability would be that I can... I can be anyone. Morph, okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I can like mystique, like how she would she could be whoever. Yeah, I can right, be anyone. Right. And so that was always a, a gift of mine where I could sound like forty, I could sound like short, I could I could I can mimic anyone yeah. extremely well. Okay. Um and it's kinda hard finding my style mm-hmm. even today in these times where I'm you know, I'm I'm so right. I'm diverse because I'm a fan of music. So I might go into a record and be like, damn, I can hear short on this and subconsciously do my verse in the form of short. <laughs> like just like, you know what I'm saying? On some, you. you know, just on some fan Got shit. You. But make a short story shorter, um, a short story shorter, I'll be like, 
dog, I can hear this record for you. And then I'll send it to him, rapping like him. He'd be like, oh, this hard, man. Oh, that's tight. And then he'll use it. I think the, the last record that he and I did was um, the Gang Signs record with okay. him and Mozzie. So I, I okay. wrote that record. And um, it, it turned up, like, super dope. But, yeah. but I, I love writing records for people. Like, I think that's that's a whole different level of, of music, um, the adventure of just knocking out records for anybody, for other people. I love yeah. that. Right. Because you be telling people to get at you on your Instagram. Yeah, be like, man. man, I'm trying to work today, man. Got a record for you. Like, I, I like. I think it's a couple people that maybe kind of like don't know if they want people to know that somebody else is writing for them. So okay. I won't, you know, I won't speak on that. But there are certain individuals that be like, Fabra, write me something. Put something together for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love creating those concepts. But there's some individuals that, that I've wrote records for. Um some pretty successful records, pretty sure. cool, and, and and I'm happy about it, man. I, I'm dope. Um, it's it's to me, it's just like damn, bro. Like like I like the way you did that. I like right. you know what I'm saying. I like the way you did it. And then I love writing R and B records. Uh oh, that's me. I love I love writing crazy R and B records, man. Like we we were doing the Sunday sessions, and Telly would be coming in, and we'd just be in there just curating and cooking. It'd be hella performers and hella artists just coming in about. 20 artists. I got all three different rooms. So every room is about, it's different artists in different rooms. And we just in there curating and cooking records. Are you one of the people that be in there smoking and drinking and shit? Or you just do whatever? I don't smoke or drink. Oh, okay. You don't smoke or drink? I don't do either one. So. You like JT. JT was here last week. I'm like, you don't eat pork or nothing. Huh? He was like, nah, <laughs> nigga. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, shout out to Fig, man. Shout out to Fig. Definitely. For, um, his leadership. Um, we may not always agree on things, but one thing that Fig has done is he's left down the independent blueprint for several to follow. Right. And if you had an ability to witness what he was doing and you didn't pick up on it, you missed. You missed terribly because right. right. he laid down a beautiful foundation and a blueprint on how to create an independent infrastructure for yourself. Right. Um, but yeah, though, nah, man, like, I, I don't smoke or drink, man. Um, it's just, you know, I, I'm not going to be like, oh, I've never smoked. I never, you know, I just, at this current, like I told you, at this current stage of my life, I'm working on being the best version of myself. Right. And I think every day I want to wake up to try to become a better version of myself. That's what's up, Fab. A couple more before we get out here. What the Warriors finna do? Are we going? I think we're going to be good. Um, I was at Media Day and just sitting up getting a chance to, Talk to some of the fellas. Um, welcome in some of the new guys. Talk to mm -hmm. Chris Paul extensively. We talked for um, a nice amount of time. Of a shared dialogue of what it was that, you know, he was willing to feel like he wanted to bring to the team. Mm -hmm. um, and what he was bringing to the team is not only his veteran leadership, but um, just him and his desire to win. Right. You know, being in the, being in the NBA, I, you know, I'll be the first to tell you I hated Chris Paul. Right, we all did. Hate Chris Paul. Like, right. Like, bro, you, you feel me? I hate you, dog. But it just lets you know how uh, much competition he was to us. You know, he always right. played great, well against us, right. and he was very competitive against us. And I just felt like, damn, I don't like you. Um, <laughs> so but, intellectual with it. Yeah, yeah, I don't like you. But on our, <laughs> but on our team, right. I'm ecstatic. Like, you know what I'm saying? You give me, it's definitely a convivial feel that I feel I'm excited about and I'm watching where it could go. Right. Ste me and Steph have such a, a, a great friendship. We talk. That's you know, sick, bro. We talk, uh, we talk often and we just talk about, you know, we talk about a multitude of things, but in this conversation, talking about basketball. This, that nigga love Oakland, blood. Yeah, for sure. That's Delhi, bro. I'm telling this nigga, I'm like, you got to tell him, bro. Patrol Hill is right down the street. You can do some <laughs> shit for my niggas in the hill too, my nigga. You, he do everything in Oakland. Why my nigga can Frisco get some love, my nigga? Bro, that's Delhi Bo, bro. Delhi, <laughs> I ain't bro. mad at him. Town man. nigga, bro. I know, you I know. He me? is definitely in town. He love the town, bro. Yeah, town nigga, bro. That's Delhi Bo, bro. That's what's up. Uh, that's what's up. But nah, man. Um, he's excited. He, you know, one thing about him is he loves them counting them out. You know, when we see at the ranks, when we see. What teams do they have expected to win, or what guys, what duels? Like, I mean, how do you talk about the best backcourt and you don't say Steph and Clay? Right. Like we talk about the best two man game in the league, and I've seen a lot. You don't mention them too. The disrespect is so the, crazy. The disrespect is insane. So I think we're thriving off that. Yeah. Um, me personally, as a as a basketball fan, I would love to see us get uh, uh, an agile, mobile big man that can move with us. Mm -hmm. um, but 
Um, Sark is very good. He's very uh, his IQ, his basketball IQ is crazy. Um, what J.K. is doing this year is just like it's so impressive. He's so explosive. He's developed his game um, so much. Yeah. Man. He's he's developed his game so much. Like if his rating was. 78 last year on 2K. He's definitely coming in at an 89. 86, 90. 87, huh? He's up there. He's a, he's he definitely stepped his game up. He damn near in them 90s right, <laughs> right now. Right. JK jump shot is right. Man. His, his, you know, his he, jumper looking good. And listen, bro. His, and, and I think he understands the system a little bit more. Right. So those are super dopes. And just all around, man. Um, I think the guys are ready to go out and, and go prove that um, they're still the team to beat. Right. They're still the team to beat. Right, you even know? though they, they can't count them out. Yeah, they're still the team to beat. We still have our nucleus and our core, our original core, and adding in um, the veteran leadership of, you know, CP and Rudy Gay and um, some of the other guys, some of the other younger guys. I think that those guys, I think they're going to go out and do pretty good. If you was, uh, when you were younger, you wanted to be how tall? About 6'4". And so you wanted to play point guard or two guard? For sure, point guard. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Who did you, who, who did you kind of like? Tim Hardaway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but surely, if you already seen Fab play, Fab got some moves for real, for real. You know what I mean, I go, I, I say, when I hoop, I say this thing, I'll be like, I just look like this. <laughs> he can say the same thing too. You feel me? He be moving out there, my nigga. Hey, this extra weight then got on, man, and slowed us down a little bit, man. But uh, there was once upon a time in my life where I could really, you know, we play with the best of them. Yeah, and um, yeah, I was a definitely a diehard Tim Hardaway fan. I felt like you know him playing for the Warriors. Um, him doing the things that he was doing Off top. Uh, on the court, very explosive, the UTEP two-step and everything. You know, he wore, that was my favorite number to wear, number 10. Um, I, 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 and I felt like it, he had a realistic frame. Yeah. You know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, wasn't too bulky. Who, was Tim too, Hardaway? Yeah. He was 6'4"? Six, 6'3", 6'2". Six, six, oh, I didn't know he was that tall. Like I that. thought he was like 6'1". Like Yes. <laughs> hey, let me see, let me see how tall. I'm like 5'10", my nigga. Let me see how tall Hardaway was. Tim Hardaway is like 6'2", 6'3". Let me see. Yeah, he might. Let's about see how. He just he had a believable frame. Like he had he didn't he wasn't the guy that looked super huge. Um, six, six feet. feet. Yep, six, six feet. feet. Yeah, five, six ten. feet. Yeah, yeah, about six feet. Yeah. And, but so it was like it was yeah. like oh no I'm looking at him like oh no I could do that too I could do that I'm right. kind of you know about five right. eight five nine right, right. now right I and then he it. he held the biggest camp um, when we was kids Camp Hardaway at Merritt okay and if you were recruited to go to Camp Hardaway you was like that was like you know pre AAU before all of these kids yeah. jumped in the AAU scene straight up Camp Hardaway was like this is like the elite basketball players like you know you got the Ray Youngs the Jason McGlassons, the Brandon Fergusons, the all of these guys that were like top know, of the top the of the top tier, top, top tier. Of, you know what I'm saying? Basketball yeah. guys, they were at Camp Hardaway, wow. man. So if you got a chance to play up at Camp Hardaway, you was it. They was looking for you, like they was like they was checking for you. So yeah, I definitely Tim Hardaway, but you know Tim, Baron Davis, all that, and so super dope, man, to be able to. And and I know you a real fan because the foot for for me when I play, that don't fucking matter, but. When I hoop, I love hooping away. I love going to the away games. I right. did it like going to the away games, but I like going to the games here because right. you get the who ride and shit. You oh, yeah, be out yeah. there repping, bro. Yeah, it's excitement. I man. love you for that. It's excitement, man. Like I'm really, you know, uh, my fandom is is, you know, the bittersweet thing. Bittersweet thing about being a Warriors fan is that my mother was a bigger Warriors fan than me. Oh wow! And so. When we won the championship, I actually cried. And my dude was like, bro, why are you crying, nigga? Yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, because my mama would have been here with me and we right. would have been lit. Right. Like, she would have oh, been lit. Man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my yeah. mom, like the players would tell you, <clears throat> my mom would be at the games and we'd be going crazy. <laughs> like, I had the mom that would go get she five, six at tickets. You. Yeah. And she bring, she bring, she go, tell your friends, come on, let's go. Oh, that's lit. She would take the friends. We all, we laughing, right. sitting up. This one, we played in San Jose for those two years. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? We driving way to yeah. San Jose, me and my friends, you know, damn yep. near sitting in the nosebleeds. 95, 96, or 97. On, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So my mom was like super basketball enthusiast. Like, she was like enthusiast. She was huge on it, man. So I really cried, bro. Like, damn, but I know. I know my mama would be at these games with me. Like, and from us sitting where we sat to where I sit now, it's right. just like, yo, this is it. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? A Warriors fan before 
the bandwagon got full, man. You know, one right. of the, you know, so it's dope. <laughs> For sure. Shout out to my nigga, Mr. Fab, man. <laughs> Uh, I really want to get into some more shit. We may have to do a part two, but uh, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you for coming out, my nigga. Uh, anything you want to say before we get you up out of here? I'm just looking towards the uh, thug therapy, man. I would love for the brothers to be involved with that. That's so right. So to uh, the brothers out there that are listening, I want you guys to understand that it's nothing wrong with revealing to heal. If we want resolve, you know what I'm saying? If we want to evolve, we got to resolve. Right. And we have to create that. We have to be able to talk about the things um, that have been paining us. And as I say, man, I pray that my brothers heal from the things that they don't talk about. Definitely. And so in thug therapy, we're going out and I'm making it, um, I'm making it a responsibility of mine to see more of us black and browns getting involved with treating our mental health. Okay. And uh, the durability of us, of who we are as men. Mm relies on that right and so of all ages so thug therapy is every first wednesday um and we're we're building seminars and workshops and it's not just so much about let's just come out and talk no it's about let's come out and work on healing let's work on sharing our resources let's work on development and this is actually how the black panther started the black panther started from brothers just meeting in the community right. seeing what it is that they could do to help out we start creating breakfast programs. We start creating governing our own communities. We start creating other self-defense programs that taught our women how to help self-defense, mm -hmm. um, culinary schools. And then we began to, to watch the maturation of that. Right. And I'm not trying to recreate something of that nature, but what I am trying to take the extract is the good and implement it back into pouring into each other. So thug therapy is something that's big on my list on to-do list. Um, and the Dope Air Academy in March, um, I plan on opening up and launching right. the, the after school program of Dope Air Academy. And to anybody that wants to get involved with what we're doing, man, please come on. Let's conflate. Let's let's utilize our resources and, sure. and financially, man, economically. Let's pour back into our community. For sure. And let's keep giving roses to the individuals that d deserve them, man. So Definitely. we can keep going. Yeah, yeah. If you need a, a radio class or instructor, yeah, I got your back. We just built a. Um, so we just built a music program in the juvenile hall system on 150 of that camp. Okay. Sweeney. Okay. So uh, me and PK are um, we built a whole music program. Oh, that's big. And that launches December 1st. And yep. I'm very excited about that. Let me that. know. So I would love for you to come in, but for we're going to sure. teach about recording, all that. engineering, yep. um, radio person, all, 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 all that shit. So, yeah. that's, so, so that whole is the dope air music program in juvenile yeah, yeah. hall. So it's just branches, man. It's branches that we just trying to keep keep connecting. I just want to real quick before on. we get you out of here, Fab. One last question: Do you come up with all the all the shit, or do you have somebody y'all you collab with with your with your dope era line, all the sayings and all the uh, my brother, my brother, the, uh, you know my my first strap and all that shit. My brother's the goat. Okay, um, got gotcha. you. My brother duct tape. He yep. is uh he creates. Uh, we brainstorm. We brainstorm, and, and, and when we brainstorm, we come up with crazy <laughs> ideas. Shit, uh. Most of the time, um, I might text him at 4 in the morning and be like, yo, you should put this on that, and he'd be like, oh, that's crazy, and he brings it to life. So some of the ideas, a majority of the ideas are my ideas, right. but I'm just, you know, but but they would be nothing. They would be dormant without him being gotcha. able to create them. Um, oh, and that's a big shout. You just said something. Big shout out to uh, Burner. Um we did the Dope Air Cookies collab, which is dropping at the end of the month, and oh, I'm super lit. excited about That's that. That's going to be lit. This is the first time that us as a brand, we've collaborated with anybody. Wow. We've kept our exclusivity for several for several years on our own and never really collaborated with anyone. So right. this launching of Cookies will, will get us into certain areas that we haven't gone because right. remember we never went in no other store. So for tw 13 years, yeah. we've never sold out of any other store. Right. So now is the first time that we get a chance to do that. So I want to shout out Burner Man for um for this opportunity. I think this is going to be big for surely. Man. Shout out Burner one time, man. You feel me? It's Wash Your Back. Po it is the Wash Your Back podcast. I am Filmo Mike. Want to give a shout out to my nigga Big Mo, Telly Mac for coming through, cuz in the background with the dope area shit. Slick Rick in the back. Watch that back. That's my and nephew right there, man. Nephew. My, my nephew. What's his name? Shout him out. Left. What's what's up? What you what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Come say something. Huh? Your ass need to get up so you can go. You getting up to go to school in the morning, too. Talk. What's up? 
Yeah, nothing, just cooling. What's your name? Shit, Takara. I go by Baby Reckless, though. You could catch me up on Apple Music and YouTube and shit. Okay, for sure. Baby Reckless. I Baby Reckless go crazy, though. What y'all listen to him? <laughs> he go crazy on God. For sure. It's I bad. Nephew 15 years old, man. He hard, though. For sure. He rock. Hell yeah. For sure. Definitely uh, said you got to go to school in the boat. Definitely getting up Hell on the school. Hell yeah, man. Well, thank y'all for, ha- uh, thank y'all for coming once again. Fab, thank you for pulling up. And being a man of your word, Jay's not. You ain't gonna be like Jay Stalin. I gotta get on Jay Stalin live. Nah, man, Stalin is big. You know, <laughs> that's my what, nigga. In, when in, I got in his, in his defense, man, what you gotta understand is Jay Stalin is a full time father. Yep, nah, like, no. you know what I'm saying like in in his defense, he's Literally. a full time father, and I'm talking about a real committed father. Like I'm every day with my children. Nah, like he's yeah. Go to school, pick up after school, football, after, and he's there off top. And so Definitely. you know, so sometimes it may be hard for him to get out. On a certain night, especially on a school night. So, in his defense, just give him a little bit more oh, time. Tom, I'm pretty sure he'll pull through. Oh, Tom. I, sure I, love, I, love, I love I love, my nigga Stalin. Y'all be smoothie, man. Don't forget, wash your back.